What you want is an amazing life free from anxiety. You want to feel good. To live an amazing life, you must first start by living an amazing day. Begin visualizing your perfect day in as much detail as you can. If you imagine yourself living by the ocean, hear the sound of the waves and smell the salt water. Daydream, and as you do, recognize that you are getting closer to your dreams becoming reality. You must see what you want to get what you want. Today I will be reading to you my highlights of Gorilla Mindset, written by Mike Cernovich. Change your mindset, change your life. All of us have tried filling the void with material objects. We see something bright and shiny. Maybe it's a new watch, car or piece of jewelry. Something inside of us says we are lacking and if we make this purchase, our need will be met. That is a lie. To get more out of life, you must get more out of yourself. The hard work starts with you. Don't get me wrong, this is not a book of feel-good nothingness and validation. The work is hard, but also quite fulfilling. I learned that when you consciously put in the work, you make progress. You may have terrible genetics, you may not have the potential to be in the Olympics or win a UFC title, but you will improve. To change my life, I had to change my mindset. The anger inside me had to be refocused into something less destructive and more productive. It took a lot of work, but I ended up going from a poor, bullied, fat kid without any money to a well-known lawyer, writer and podcast producer who travels the world. In many ways, my success makes me laugh, as my life story can seem unbelievable. Wikipedia defines mindset as a set of assumptions, methods or notations held by one or more people or groups of people that is so established that it creates a powerful incentive within these people or groups to continue to adopt or accept prior behaviors, choices or tools. Your mindset determines how you perceive and interact with the world. It was Carol Dweck who led the mindset revolution in her breakthrough book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. Dr. Dweck identified powerful research into psychology showing that the difference between success and failure often had less to do with innate talent and more to do with the type of mindset one has, a growth mindset or fixed mindset. Research showed that those who adopted a growth mindset, a belief that challenges in life present an opportunity to grow your abilities, were far more likely to succeed than those with a fixed mindset, that is a belief that your intelligence and ability do not increase, but instead have a set point. In Gorilla Mindset, you will learn how to apply a growth mindset to your life. In addition, you will be introduced to the power of the abundance mindset. Imagine you believe that the world is abundant. The world is one of endless resources and unlimited potential. What you do matters. Your choices matter. You matter. Each day is a new day full of infinite possibilities. How would you act if you knew that anything you wanted to do was possible? Would you live differently if you believed that you were abundant and full of potential? Mind and body are deeply connected. You cannot succeed in improving one without improving the other. This book is about embracing your guerrilla nature to find dominance and power, but you will see that this primarily means power over yourself, not others. The third eye in the gorilla recognizes we are great apes who seek enlightenment. We want answers. These answers cannot be found in our mind or body alone. We all started off as children with an abundance mindset and genuine fascination and curiosity about life. Somewhere along the way, it was lost. Mindset is a choice. We can choose to view the world as one of scarcity or one of abundance. Mindset and conversation. The power of self-talk. If you talk to your friends like you talked to yourself, you wouldn't have any friends. Mike Sonovich. You should never candy coat truths, but being overly dramatic is both inaccurate and unhelpful. Our friends turn to us for a combination of emotional support, validation and actionable advice. 
you should support yourself in the same way. Gorilla Mindset Shift. Treat yourself like a treasured and trusted friend. Negative thoughts are usually lies. Besides, even if we do make a mistake, we can make a mindset shift to overcome the challenge. No one taught us how to talk to ourselves. It happened through osmosis. We silently repeated the same speaking patterns, words and phrases to ourselves that others had spoken to us. You could spend hundreds of hours on a therapist's couch analyzing where you learned how to talk to yourself. But where you learned it is not the question you need to answer. Gorilla Mindset is not about blaming your parents, teachers or other loved ones or authority figures. This is a book about taking action. Turn on the recorder and start talking. As with the mirror exercise above, do not censor yourself. Be real. Let it all out. Say all of those mean, nasty, angry thoughts out loud. Get it out of your system. Then, in a day or two, play back the recording. Listen to it objectively. You will realize it sounds ridiculous. When my coaching clients perform this exercise, they often feel disgusted. They simply cannot believe they said those things. Yet before using the recorder, my clients repeated those words to themselves day in and day out. Save the recording. When your self-talk starts to become negative, play it to remind yourself of how ridiculous it really sounds. Criticism and self-hate are not based on open inquiry, they are based on value judgments. Most often those value judgments were someone else's. The attacks in your head are other people's voices that you've heard and internalized over the years. That means that you are attacking yourself based on someone else's standards. How goofy is that? Change negative self-talk into positive self-talk. Positive self-talk can come in the form of affirmations or mantras. An affirmation can be a sentence, paragraph, or even a full page of conversation you have with yourself. A mantra tends to be shorter, usually a word or two. When writing your mantra, imagine the person you want to be. Visualize it. Once you improve your self-talk, your mood will improve. What's more, your improved self-talk will have another effect. It will improve how you treat those around you. When you start talking more politely to yourself, your friends, family, business associates and other loved ones may be surprised by how you are now talking to them as well. You will begin to choose your words more carefully. When you stop insulting and overreacting to yourself, you will discover that you also don't overreact when dealing with others. I tend to speak in absolutes. When something doesn't go my way or when I make a mistake, I say to myself, you always mess this up or you never get this right. This negative thinking reinforces an unconscious belief that I am incompetent. It is harmful and destructive. Rather than saying I always make the same mistake, recognize that each mistake is an opportunity for growth. Moreover, do you really always make the same mistake? That is probably not true and telling yourself you always make that mistake and will never improve is certainly not helpful. When going on a negative rant against yourself, stop and ask, would I talk to a close friend or loved one like this? Maybe you would, but I doubt it. When you start talking to yourself in a negative manner, raise your body up, take a deep breath and smile. You might find the rant stops in its tracks. Rather than blame and talk down to yourself, ask, how can I prevent making the same choice in the future? Mindset and choice. Change the way you perceive life's challenges. How you ask a question and what facts you include when asking your question often influences the answer. This is framing your question. There are entire books devoted to how to ask the right questions when seeking a raise in salary, a favor from a friend or even a date. The way you ask a question can often determine how the question is answered. This is something even children understand. When they ask one parent for a privilege, they often frame the question as, mom said I could stay the night at my friend's house, is that okay with you? 
By including the fact that mom said it's okay, the child is letting you know your answer won't cause drama or conflict. Imagine your consciousness is the judge or jury or parent or friend that you must persuade. You want your conscious mind to believe in you. Framing is how your mind perceives whatever situation you are in. Framing is how you choose to think about and thus perceive a challenge in your life. How could you not be happier with a silver medal than a bronze medal? The answer lies in our focus. What do Olympic winners focus on? I might have won a gold medal and been on the Wheaties box, says the silver medalist. I might have not been on the podium at all, says the bronze medalist. It's all in the frame. The silver medalist chose to focus on what might have been a gold medal. The bronze medalist also chose to focus on what might have been no medal at all. Reframe the issues. Choose to focus on how the difficulty you're facing will make you stronger, more intelligent, more emotionally complex, or more resourceful. Frame your problems as a source of power. Each problem you face is preparation for your big moment. What if instead of feeling hopelessness or self-pity, you reframed your problem in this way? Once I've gotten through this problem, I will have a reservoir of strength that will make me unstoppable. Instead of calling something a problem, reframe it as a challenge. That seems cliche, but it really works. The challenges you face today will give you the resources you need to succeed tomorrow. You fell down a lot as an infant before you learned to walk. You tripped when learning to run. At some point, you were clueless and made mistakes, yet those mistakes eventually led you to your success and mastery. Mindset and being in the moment. How to check into your life. We all understand what it means to be mindless, in a lower state of consciousness, distracted and unaware. Mindfulness is the opposite of mindlessness. Mindfulness is a state of higher consciousness. Mindfulness is freedom from anxiety or fear. Mindfulness is perception, not judgment. Mindfulness is getting out of your head and into your body. Mindfulness is checking into the present moment. Mindfulness is being in the zone or in flow state. Mindfulness is being present and engaged. Mindfulness is being rather than doing. Meditation is one approach that people can use to become more mindful. Indeed, in my teens and early 20s, I trained with a master of Samadhi meditation. Meditation is valuable. It teaches you to control your breath and posture, two key components of mindfulness. Yet meditation also encourages you to stop thought, which is a form of disengagement with the world. Meditation is valuable for relaxing and de-stressing. To become fully mindful, however, I prefer we take a more active approach. You realize already that self-talk, framing and focus will help you get into the present moment. When you begin to notice your thoughts spiraling out of control, a lack of mindfulness, you use self-talk and framing techniques to bring your thoughts back under control. Try this instead. I am, insert where you are, what you are doing, what you are wearing, what you are sensing in a non-judgmental way, reading a book to help me grow. I may not agree with everything in the book, but even not agreeing with someone can help me discover the truth. Disagreement allows me to examine my own core beliefs and values. Do you see what we did there? You just checked in. You were conscious. You were engaged. You were mindful. When you find yourself judging a person or an experience, reframe it. Instead of getting frustrated or angry by saying this is wrong, reframe the issue as this is a great opportunity for me to examine my own beliefs. I am improving by focusing on the opportunity for personal development and growth. Often this inner judge fills in the blanks with negative thoughts, feelings and emotions and thus creates our perceptions about the world. Maybe it's talk to your boss about a race or approach a girl you're attracted to. Your mind starts spinning out of control. Your breathing changes, you become breathless as your rapid breathing puts you in a mild state of hyperventilation. When your mind starts spinning out of control, you have lost your state of mindfulness. 
To regain your mindfulness, check into your thoughts and your body. The surest way to get into the moment is to become aware of yourself, become aware of your body. The easiest way to become aware of yourself and your body is to either start talking out loud or use self-talk to check into your environment. I have a popular podcast on iTunes called Mike Cernovich Podcast. Before each episode, I use the very mindfulness techniques we're talking about to prepare myself for the show. Before speaking, I use self-talk, sometimes out loud, warm up my vocal cords to check in. Here's an example. I'm looking at a microphone. It's a silver orb with slots cut out that have a black sort of mesh under the slots. There is blue written on it, the brand of the microphone. The B has a lightning bolt on it. There's a red light on the side of the microphone. Rather than worry about the podcast topic, if I will make a mistake or whatever else, I simply become engaged in the process of speaking. While checking in, I'm not trying to think brilliant thoughts. I merely become mindful and aware. Because of this, I have no anxiety when podcasting. In fact, I usually don't even use a script. Instead, I trust the process. When you are worried about some uncertain future event, you're not living in the present moment. Active meditation and living mindfully doesn't mean that you ignore your problems. If you have money problems, then you should want to solve them. Is being anxious going to solve that problem? Anxiety is an emotion that disempowers you and accomplishes nothing. When you learn how to get into the moment and engage in active meditation, you'll no longer feel anxiety. You'll have a sense of calmness going with the flow of life rather than against it. You don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, much less at a point further in the future, so why are you worrying about it? When you start living in the moment, you stop worrying about the future. To connect deeply with others, you must be present, mindful and engaged. Often we talk to someone and feel like we're not being heard, like the person across from us is somewhere else. To make deeper connections, you want the person you're talking with to feel like the only person in the room. Use mindfulness techniques to stay engaged. When you feel distracted during a conversation, you can help yourself check in by using these two powerful mantras. I use them regularly, especially when there's a lull in conversation. There is no place else I'd rather be. There is no one else I'd rather see. Before you begin a hard day at work, a workout or even have a family dinner with the in-laws, check in. Ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Are you working hard to take care of your family? Checking in will help you become aware of your emotions and can make even the most challenging or mundane things more fulfilling. Mindfulness is getting into the moment and becoming aware of yourself and your surroundings. Writers and artists are masters at noticing details others miss, as a writer must paint an image with the mind's eye of the reader. Mindset and Mood How to control your state of mind Your state is your mood, your emotions, or how you feel in the present moment. We've all heard the expression, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. This is a recognition that it's going to be one of those days where nothing seems to go right. It is recognizing something about your state of mind, but it is also approaching it with an attitude of passiveness, of resignation. Thoreau referred to this as quiet desperation. Why not take an active approach to our state of mind? To change your state, you must first use the mindfulness exercises to check in. What is your default state? How do you feel generally? How do you feel right now, in the present moment? Mastering your mental state requires you to be honest with yourself, to dig deep, and to be comfortable letting go. Unfortunately, most people never master a mental state as something inside them. Their inner judge or preconceived notions stop them from performing these exercises. Your default state, what we call home base, is how you feel without trying to feel differently. It's how you naturally feel without any additional effort. Mindset and focus. How to take control of your attention. 
Think about what you really need, what really matters to you. If you forget to do something, would your life really change for the worse? When stepping outside of my door, before closing it, I stop. I feel for my wallet, cell phone and keys. Because of this gorilla mindset habit, I have never locked myself out of my apartment. Focus on the essentials. We go from a state of distraction to hyper-focusing on trivial bullshit. My Wi-Fi won't work. Where's my food? What's taking so long? Check in. You are focusing on negative energy. What you are focusing on is frustrating you, making you angry, and bringing you further away from feeling good about yourself and accomplishing your goals. Tony Robbins says, what you focus on is what you feel. If you focus on what is lacking, scarcity mindset, rather than what you have, abundance mindset, you will feel frenzied, frustrated, and angry. What if we allowed our emotions to overtake us? That would add stress to our lives and be physically and emotionally draining. Is it worth it? Is losing vital emotional, physical, and life force energy worth it? Is losing our temper worth it? Ask yourself in in the present moment, what am I focusing on? If the answer is anything other than what really matters, ask yourself why. Obviously, you can't focus on something non-stop. You are not a robot. Relaxation and leisure are necessary. You had better have a good answer though. Because I want to be distracted is not an acceptable answer. You can't claim to be free if you're accessible 24-7. The more plugged in you are, the less importance you're placing on yourself. Being plugged in and connected does not signal importance. It shows that you are a slave to others. Take charge. Disconnect. Focus. Our focus is a ruthless because we must cut out all people and activities distracting us from what we want. Ask these questions to develop ruthless focus. What do you want more of? What do you want less of? Does person or activity bring you more of what you want? Does person or activity bring you less of what you want? We are the sum of our activities and the people we surround ourselves with. Asking these four ruthless focus questions will help you decide whether what you're about to do fits in with your desired outcomes. For example, I do not want more stress in my life. To make more money, you often must endure more stress. If I wanted more money, I might deal with more stress to make more money. Yet this decision to accept this stress would be mindful rather than thoughtless. When people insist that you do what they want, they are attempting to control your life. They are the ones being selfish. When you develop ruthless focus, you may learn that many of your friends and family members aren't friends at all. They are people who use you for their own ends and become deeply offended when you start living your own life. By taking inventory of your life, you'll begin to understand who and what you want in it. Focus on obtaining more of what you want out of life while refusing to focus on negative people and activities. When you feel your mind wandering, use self-talk to remind yourself, I am choosing to focus on X when I should be focusing on Y. When you eat, you should focus on your food. Studies have shown people tend to eat 25 to 50% more calories when eating in front of the television. Because we aren't focused on eating while watching television or surfing the web, we lose track of how much we've actually eaten. You work most effectively when you focus on one task at a time. Choose one task and work on that for a set period of time. I work in 45 minute intervals and take 5 to 15 minutes to goof off and decompress. Mindset and lifestyle. Change the way you live. Lifestyle is how you live your life. What you eat, drink, where you live, the people you spend your time with and the activities you engage in. We often view mindset defensively. We use our mindset techniques to overcome obstacles and turn problems into a source of power. Imagine how much more powerful these techniques will be when you start using them offensively, when you use these techniques to take your life to the next level rather than merely to get you out of a rut. Avoid negative situations and draining people. 
Instead, choose to engage in life-affirming activities with positive, helpful people. When you allow negative people in your life, you begin using the guerrilla mindset techniques defensively. You are fighting off stress and anxiety rather than pushing forward toward your goal. There's nothing cool about powering through sleep deprivation. Most of us are defeated before we even get out of bed. We stay up too late and wake up exhausted. We press the snooze button several times. Our mindset is in a negative place. Gorilla Mindset Shift You are an elite athlete in the game of life who must properly warm up for an intense and inspirational competition. The momentum of your day begins with your morning routine. Your perfect morning will lead to your perfect day which will lead to a better life. To stay on track, self-control is important. Staying in the moment, keeping focused and persisting is not always easy. This is where discipline and self-control come in, into play. However, self-control tends to operate like a muscle, getting fatigued with repeated use. Therefore, try to juggle too many tasks in a day and you're bound to let one slip. Fortunately, also like a muscle, self-control gets stronger after repeated exertion and rest. Thus, to perform in the moment and reach goals, self-control needs to be used judiciously. Ideally, goals and behaviors should be staggered to give time for rest and recovery. New endeavors should be added one at a time. Organizing your lifestyle to optimize your mindset development and personal growth is an ongoing process of trial and error. Do not be afraid to experiment and tweak your lifestyle regularly. You want to improve the people you surround yourself with, the foods you eat, the type of exercise you engage in, and even the amount of time you spend on your smartphone. Mindset and the body, health and fitness. Gorilla Mindset Shift. The heart and mind are connected. If something is good for your heart, it's good for your mind. Endothelial function refers to the ability of arteries to dilate properly. Dilated arteries are open, allowing blood to flow freely. A heart attack is caused by a blood clot. When you have endothelial dysfunction, you're at a greater risk for a heart attack. Fruits and vegetables, especially those rich in flavonoids, improve endothelial function. Nitrate containing foods like beets and beet juice also improve endothelial function. Beet juice and L-arginine, an over-the-counter supplement, also improve endothelial function by increasing the amount of nitric oxide in your body. Nitric oxide allows your blood vessels to dilate. Several studies have been dedicated to the relationship between nitric oxide and blood flow. All of them show a positive relationship between nitric oxide, a good blood flow, and overall health. Learning to control your breathing will improve your mindset. Posture keeps your organs aligned, your balance proper, and decreases your risk of falling and thus injury. It also makes you appear taller, more confident, and physically attractive. Good posture can boost your mood, increase your testosterone levels, and even improve your breathing. Lymph fluid circulates throughout the body and is used to recycle tissue fluids back into the bloodstream. It is critical to fighting off disease and toxins as well as transporting healthy minerals like enzymes and hormones throughout the body. Lymph is moved throughout the body via physical movement. When you stretch, walk or flex your muscles, lymphatic fluid is pumped towards your heart. Over 90% of your body's serotonin and 50% of the body's dopamine are stored in the gut. People who are nervous or worry often complain about poor digestion. This is because your gut is a part of your nervous system. It knows your state of mind. The mind-body connection is much deeper and more complex than you probably imagined. Everything is interconnected. Your posture, blood, digestion, diet and exercise, and your breathing all influence each other and work together as a whole. When any of these factors are out of balance, it can bring your whole body out of balance, which in turn puts your mindset out of balance. If there was a gorilla mindset diet and exercise program, the program would be based on these few general principles. If you apply them to your life, your health, 
fitness, and mindset will improve. Eat, blend, or juice eight to nine servings of vegetables and fruit each day. Lift weights two to four times per week. Perform cardio three to five times per week can be alternated with lifting days. Do something physical every day, whether it's hiking, brisk walking, or even a massage. Avoid foods high in sugar, starch, or dairy. Some people can eat as much food as they want without gaining weight. Others can get fat just by looking at cheesecake. Unfortunately, we all have varying degrees of insulin sensitivity, which despite the terminology is a good trait to have. The more insulin sensitive you are, the more sugar and carbs you can eat. If you are insulin resistant, your body is more likely to store carbohydrates as fat. Plants are the king of food. Diets high in plant foods are associated with every benefit you can imagine. Lower cancer risk, higher cancer survival rates, a stronger immune system, and even better looking skin. Best foods are those high on the Andy. The Andy, short for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index, was created by Dr. Joel Furman, a leading anti-aging physician. The Andy score is based on the amounts of various plant nutrients and vitamins and minerals a food contains. The Andy index also considers the free radical fighting ability of foods. Collard greens, kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, arugula, red peppers, romaine lettuce, broccoli and carrots are examples of commonly available foods that rate high on the Andy. The top 20 are foods that the fittest people tend to eat the most of, that are ranked high on the Andy scale. These foods are chosen for their high antioxidant profile, alkalinity, or because they are low in sugar and high in nutrients. The 20 best foods to base your diet around are chicken, salmon, whitefish, lean beef, kale, carrots, sweet or white potatoes, rice, eggs, eat those yolks, they're good for you, blueberries, brussels sprouts, arugula, red peppers, romaine lettuce, broccoli, asparagus, spinach, tomatoes, and oranges. Of course, you can eat a wide variety of food, but if you build your diet around these 20 foods, you will enjoy a high level of health and aesthetic physique. When you're first starting off, track your daily caloric intake with some software like FitDay, a free online food and nutrient tracking program. It allows you to track your activity, body weight, and daily caloric intake. Weigh yourself while tracking your food to learn how many calories you can eat in a day. I recommend following the isocaloric diet or zone diet. Under both, you eat approximately the same number of calories from protein, carbohydrates, and fat. I tend to balance my calories between protein, carbohydrates, and fat, while others prefer more carbohydrates. The less insulin sensitive you are, the less carbohydrates you can eat. When lifting weights, you force your body to undergo short-term stress. Some people believe all stress is bad. In fact, our bodies evolve to respond favorably to stress, if it's the right kind of stress. Exercise has an anti-inflammatory response as your body produces substances to help deal with the short-term inflammation caused by exercising. Although we think inflammation is bad, it's the chronic long-term inflammation that is harmful. Short-term inflammation from a vigorous training session is highly beneficial for your overall health. Muscle serves a structural role in your body. Muscle supports our skeletal system, our joints and ligaments. Around 44 million Americans have low bone mineral density. By training with weights, they can improve bone density, leading to fewer fractures. Lifting weights can also improve posture and strengthen the lower back, which is the major cause of work-related injuries. Lifting weights improves your muscular structure, boosts your immune system, and does not provide excess stress hormones like cortisol, which running and other long-duration cardio can do. Shorter duration cardio is beneficial. Interval training, that is where you perform an all out effort like a sprint for 20 to 30 seconds followed by a 60 to 90 seconds of low intensity movement is helpful for fat loss and overall health. High intensity interval training also increases blood flow to all parts of the body, including the brain. Make time for taking control of your health today or your body will force you to make time to recover from illness and disease in the future. Gorilla Mindset Shift you only have one body. 
take care of it as it has to last your entire life. You can combine protein and fat, protein and carbs, and protein and carbs and fat. You cannot combine fat and carbs together without protein, as that causes the body to secrete excess insulin and store the food as fat. Always eat some protein with your carbs and fat. Yes, you can eat after 6 p.m. However, you should keep your carbohydrate intake low, as the body does not process carbohydrates well at night. Throw away all junk food. Out of sight, out of mind. Make it hard to eat unhealthy foods. Mindset and posture. How posture affects your physical and mental health. Your posture impacts your mood, feeling of well-being and even your hormonal levels. Behavioral signs of dominant status include erect posture, glares, eye contact, strutting, and in humans, assertive speech. Individuals whose behaviors exhibit dominance show high or rising levels of testosterone compared to those who exhibit deference. Testosterone and dominance are reciprocally related. Poor posture results from repetition, largely due to the pressures, temptations and distractions of the modern world. You can improve your posture, but just as improving your mindset takes time, correcting bad posture is not something you will achieve overnight. Mindset and money. How you keep money in perspective and in your pocket. Money is not just something you want, it is something you need. Without money, it is simply impossible to live. Yet somewhere along the way, we were taught that money is evil. The pursuit of money is far from the root of all evil. Having money allows you to do good in the world. Having money allows you to avoid compromising your values. Money gives you access to better food, better health care and more charity. When doing research for what would be a breakthrough book, The Millionaire Next Door, the authors learned some startling facts. Most of those we think of as rich really aren't, and often those we view as being of modest means are rich. The authors of Millionaire Next Door learned a secret about many plastic surgeons, doctors and investment bankers. Not only were they not rich, they were deeply in debt. High income earners often spend all that they make and then some. When we make more money, we tend to spend more money. There seems to be a habit of growing into our larger incomes. What is going on? Gorilla Mindset Shift Stop attempting to buy your desired status. Before buying something, ask yourself if the product will enhance your life. Are you buying the product for you or to impress other people? Perhaps you are using money as a drug to self-medicate and fill a void of an unfulfilling job or home life. Perhaps your consumerism acts as an opiate for a life void of meaning. Is money the real opiate of the masses? Money is great and you should go make as much money as you possibly can and then some. The question of course is how much money do you really want? That's where the mindset shift comes in. Whenever you are out shopping or about to make an online purchase, reflect on what processes led you to become a customer. Then recreate those methods in your own businesses. Although middlemen have a bad reputation, a good middleman brings real value to a transaction by bringing together buyers and sellers who might not otherwise have met. You have skills that you can share with the world. Even if your skills are niche and apply to less than 1% of the human population, there are billions of people on the internet. People are thirsty for your knowledge. Chances are that you're not sharing your information, you are keeping it bottled up inside. Perhaps you share that knowledge via word of mouth with a friend. Not sharing your knowledge is a major guerrilla mindset money-making mistake. A friend of mine gives seminars on how to organize your Gmail. It's a great seminar that helps many people who struggle with email organization and in 60 minutes he can solve their problems. People are searching on Google for solutions to problems. Remember that gorilla mindset shift you just made? You have solutions to problem and Google will put you in touch with these people. People will search for this information, find you and realize it's easier to hire you. Gorilla mindset shift. Record everything you do. 
If you have a smartphone, your video camera is higher quality than film studios in the 1960s. All of those sitcoms you grew up watching can't compete with your technology. When asked why he was such an amazing hockey player, Gretzky replied, A good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. Get to the market before it's a market. Where is the market heading? Have you seen a movie or advertisement lately and noticed a new trend? Perhaps what you haven't seen evidences a great trend. If you have the answer to a problem, you are an authority on that problem. Now you have to become a trusted authority. You have to build trust. To build trust, follow the rule that all writers have laser beamed into their foreheads. Show, don't tell. Don't tell people you're an expert. Show them. That's where those YouTube videos will come in handy. If you lost 20 pounds of fat, post your before and after pictures and your food and exercise diary. You're not telling them you're an expert on fat loss, you're showing them. The halo effect is a well-recognized heuristic or a thinking shortcut we take. If someone shows his expertise on one subject, we assume, rightly or wrongly, that he's an expert on every other subject. To create a halo around you, exercise professionalism in all you do. Show that you are an authority every day. When people ask you questions, give well-researched, solid answers. Admit when you don't know something. As Warren Buffett said, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and 20 seconds to destroy one. If you go through life with that mindset, you'll do things differently. Also, remember that transparency will help you more than hurt you. I can't be caught doing anything because I've disclosed everything. Making money is easy once you adopt the right mindset. Now that your head is in the right place, you will see opportunity everywhere. You now live in a world of abundance and are willing to take action. Use these guerrilla mindset shift affirmations as a reminder. I have solved problems that others struggle with. Therefore, I have the answers that others need. I am a content creator. If I want to be a TV star, I'll start a YouTube channel. If I want to be a radio star, I'll start a podcast. If I want to become a writer, I'll publish my own books. I am a producer and not a consumer. My reputation is everything. I will never abuse the trust others instill in me. Where do I put my money? Before deciding, do the following. Have an emergency cash savings of 6 to 12 months in living expenses. Pay off your credit cards. Begin to dollar cost average into the market at regular intervals. Be wary of people who claim to be day traders or who only talk about their one or two big scores. Look at how they perform over a 10 year period. Dollar cost averaging into the market means you buy low cost mutual funds at regular intervals. You do not try to time the market. Rather than wait until someone else tells you now is the time to buy, you purchase index funds at regular intervals. To get rich, you must invest in the most important stock out there, you incorporated. When it comes to making money, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a laborer, a worker, a drone, or a wage slave? There is no wrong answer here. If you have low feelings of self-worth, as you have seen in chapter after chapter, those can be changed by reframing and controlling your mental state. Begin thinking of ways to distinguish yourself from the rest of the people in your office or workplace. They are generics. You are your own brand. For example, Mike Cernovich is a brand, Cernovich.com is a website I run, and each have their own trademark. Gorilla Mindset is also a trademark brand. While my message may not be suitable for the masses of men and women who live lives of hopelessness and despair, I do have a message. My message is one of unapologetic self-development. I don't apologize for seeking to better my life and do not expect you to make any apologies for your life either. When you develop your own personal brand by differentiating yourself from the rest of the pack, it stands to reason that some people will love you. However, some people will always hate you as society often dislikes those who have the courage to stand up and be recognized. Find ways to choose yourself in your own life. 
Ask yourself, are you waiting for others to recognize and appreciate you? Take action. Become your own hype man in marketing and PR department. If you have a goal or desire, stop waiting around for others to give you the chance. Seize the opportunity by choosing yourself. To save the most on your taxes, you need to become self-employed. It's possible to become self-employed even while working at a regular salary job. You are a company. You incorporate it. Invest in your company. Learn about your company. Study it with the most intense detail. Eating healthy foods will save you healthcare costs in the long run. Reading books will help you improve your life and keep your mind sharp. When you're broke, you don't get to buy what you want. You only get to buy what you need. Never delude yourself into believing a want is a need. Mindset and vision. Change what you see, change what you get. You may believe visualization is challenging, but in fact you have already mastered it. Do you think about the past or ponder bad memories? When you think about the past, do you involve one or more of your five senses? Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell? Do you feel happy or sad when you think about the past? Does thinking about the past elicit emotions in you? That is, does your mood or mental state change? Thinking about and reflecting on the past is a form of visualization. When you think about the past, do you feel the moment? Sometimes you can even hear the sounds and see the sights of the memory. It's like you're really there. Rather than ponder about the past, visualize your future. Think of a goal you'd like to achieve. Maybe it's making more money, finding a better job, or getting fit. Your visualization must be specific. The difference between visualization and daydreaming is this. Visualization is specific and targeted towards a goal. Use those visualization skills that you have wasted on thinking about the past to dream about a better future. You'll be surprised by what and who you attract into your life. People often ask me how they can find their life purpose or motivation. They don't like my answer, but it's the only one I'm capable of giving. If you feel unfulfilled, stop what you're doing. Try something else. Walk the streets until you're exhausted. Repeat this every day. When you finally see what you want, your life will change. Involve all of your available five senses, sight, feeling, taste, touch, smell. If you want to live by the ocean, smell the sea salt. Hear the waves crashing against the beach. See the seagulls flying overhead. Taste the salt from mist in your tongue. Smell the clean, crisp air. If you want to develop a better relationship with your friends, family, or loved ones, you can also use these visualization exercises. How do you want your spouse, child, or parents to see you? Imagine yourself being that person. When you catch yourself thinking about the past, get into the present moment. Tell yourself, I'm going to imagine myself living in the future. Mindset starts today. Creating your amazing life one day at a time. What you want is an amazing life free from anxiety. You want to feel good. To live an amazing life, you must first start by living an amazing day. Begin visualizing your perfect day in as much detail as you can. If you imagine yourself living by the ocean, hear the sound of the waves and smell the salt water. Daydream, and as you do, recognize that you are getting closer to your dreams becoming reality. You must see what you want to get what you want. It helps to write out what you imagine the perfect day to be like. The more detail you use, the better. When writing out the perfect day, start with the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. Who do you wake up next to? What do you do after you wake up? When do you go to work? Where do you wake up? Why do you wake up?